Snow Tracks is sponsored by ski Snowmobiles. Experience that ski feeling. Yamaha revs your heart. And by FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. One of my favorite sleds to come out for 2020 from Skidoo is definitely the Backcountry XRS. Built off the Rev G4 platform, the Backcountry is just that, Backcountry, with a 146-inch track. But possibly one of the most unique designs is not the big track, but the C-Motion rear suspension that gives you a harmony of on and off trail designs built to give you the best of both worlds. Or in short, this sled is built to be able to rip the trails as well, but in stock form, we just don't see the average rider heading out for a touring weekend with the family. So today I've got a nice compilation of parts from Kimpex to make the backcountry a little bit more trailable and family friendly while still keeping the cool factor. And for that family-friendly part of this build, I'm talking about going from a single seat to a double. But with Kimpex, it's all about style, comfort, and the ability to switch between one-up and two-up riding in mere seconds. And the product is called the Seat Jack. Now, the Seat Jack comes available for nearly every modern sled made. And for today, I'm going to be installing the fully featured, completely full of amenities version. By fully featured, I mean heated hand grips and an RCA output for the second rider's heated shield. Add to this the adjustable rear backrest that's comfortable for a youth rider all the way up to a full-size adult, and the incredibly plush and comfy seat cushioning, as well as shielded handholds to keep snow and wind from getting into the passenger's hands, and you're carrying a passenger in ultimate comfort. Wiring is simple, and install of the seat is nothing short of expertly designed and intuitive. Possibly one of the nicest features is the fact that when you wanna go out for a rip for an off-trail day without the passenger, you can release and remove the seat in just a few seconds. The electrical features quick connectors and the only evidence of the seat left on your sled is four slick looking aluminum mounts that are low profile and quality looking. No ugly brackets, no loose wires, everything is clean and tidy and you're back to the comforts of one up riding. Reinstall is just as simple and can be done by just about anyone without reading a 10 page instructional. In my opinion, this is the easiest to use and the cleanest two-up seat kit in the industry, and it doesn't make your sweet backcountry into a lame two-up couch. The stock skis on the XRS are very off-trail focused, as is the RAS3 front suspension that's got a similar geometry to the mountain sled, but making a small change up front here can make worlds of difference. And the swap that I'm talking about is going from the Pilot DS2 mountain-style Skidoo ski to the Kimpex Rush-style ski. A durable UHMW design at 5.5 inches wide features a fully integrated and complete package all in one. It comes with the mounts, the carbides, the ski handles, and the ski itself for much less than the competitors sell just a pair of bare skis for. These Rush skis are super light at only four pounds and they feature a unique teardrop front keel that aids in reducing darting and keeping you tracking where your skis are pointed. The 60 degree single carbide provides adequate bite and with 5.5 inches of width, we can still play off trail just fine, but the on-trail steering characteristics are going to improve massively. Now, while we're up front at the skis, I wanna mention something that's really important for the next part that we're gonna install, and that is that Skidoo snowmobiles are very rider forwards, and that translates into much higher ski pressure than other brands. And while rider forwards does have its benefits, there can be drawbacks as well. And when you're driving into a trailer, paved gas station, lunch stop, or hotel parking lot, it can cause a lot of trouble. When the front end bites so hard, the track just spins. The Kimpex Ruski Gen 3 retractable wheels can be an excellent answer to this problem. The self-retracting wheel system will automatically flip into the retracted position once you hit the trail, and deploying them is simple with just a quick pull on the handle. It's a very unique design that gives you wheeled control and steering on hard surfaces and features three height adjustments, so no matter the ski or carbide you're using, they stay up and off the ground. 
And because they aren't contacting the ground, this means that your driveway, garage floor, and trailer don't get tore up from the carbides, but also your carbides stay sharper longer. Oh, and they work just as well in reverse too. Now, while we're on the topic of safety on hard surfaces, I wanna talk about keeping your sled safe when it's on hard surfaces, namely hard frozen groomed trails or anywhere where you're not getting enough lube on the rails because this long 146 inch sled can get a little warm when you're trail riding. Ice scratchers on this big sled are a must, and while some folks think that you only need scratchers on mountain sleds, think again. These Kimpex 12 inch steel scratchers are designed for sleds with less than a two inch lug. They're easy to install and can be left down when in reverse, without the worry of bending like many other styles. They are reverse threaded and come with Loctite to ensure that they stay put, and they have a built-in serrated carbide tip so you get years of worry-free use, keeping your engine cool and also your slide rails lubed. Now on those super cold days when the trail is completely frozen up, it can be really hard to stay warm. And I know that I always get a lot of flack for this, but hand muffs, they're where it's at. I mean, yeah, they look a little different, but at minus 30, there's nothing better and who cares what they look like. You could ride with thin gloves on and won't have to stop to put your hands under the exhaust or pull your digits back into the palm of your glove and wait for the feeling to return. Yeah, I know you've been there. I have been too, let's all be honest. These muffs have a cool window on the top so you can see all your control surfaces and they're a universal fit. So yes, they will fit your sled no matter the brand and even with hand guards, they still mount up great and offer a huge amount of wind protection, keeping your hands happier all day. And hey, if it warms up, take them off and toss them in the trunk. They install in seconds. Whether it be utility, off trail or on trail riding, having a set of mirrors can be a huge help. And with today's modern designs, they don't look that out of place. I know we all have a stigma about old chunky mirrors, but Kimpex's deluxe mirror is styled nicely, features a wind release, so even at wide open throttle, they won't move around, and also are protected with a flexible rubber boot, ensuring that the joints stay dry and clean for years of smooth adjustments. Mirrors are incredibly handy when trail riding to keep an eye on the rest of your crew, or even just to see if the passenger on the back seat jack is happy. And I look at it from this standpoint. Even my two-stroke dual sport dirt bike has mirrors and they come in handy all the time. So why not on a 50-50 sled too? And while I'm on the topic of unique stuff, Kimpex isn't just a supplier of cool specialty parts. They have their own product lines within the company that go across many different categories within snowmobiling. And one of those areas is lubricants like this low ash, anti-smoke, high performance two-stroke oil with carbon reducing additives. The Kimpex brand of semi-synthetic oil meets manufacturers two-stroke oil standards and can be bought in one liter, four liter, or 54 gallon drum quantity, and is built to the Kimpex brand standard of quality and performance, staying fluid up to minus 45 degrees Celsius or minus 49 Fahrenheit. While on the topic of cool and unique products, Kimpex also owns its own line of gear called CKX. They manufacture all of it, and this year they have a very cool new helmet called the Mission. While most off-trail riders choose to wear a moto-style helmet, if you're out riding long, high-mile days in cold temps, a full-face helmet is never a bad choice. And the new CKX Mission with the AMS technology is a great answer. The unique feature about this helmet is the AMS, or the air management system, that creates a low-pressure zone at the rear of the helmet to allow the moisture-rich air we exhale to be drawn out the rear of the helmet quickly. Specialty design passages inside of the helmet work together with a rubber breath boot and it directs all of the air into the AMS passages. All of this is designed to give you a fog-free riding experience without the need for a heated visor and the associated cables and wiring. Along with the AMS system, the helmet features a much larger field of view with a greater peripheral vision, as well as the adjustable peak that helps to block out sunlight and adds a cool visual element to the helmet. It's interesting to note that the visor is aerodynamically designed not to catch the wind and pull your head backwards, but directs flow evenly to keep your head stable even at higher speeds. All of this is wrapped into a 1500 gram carbon version or 1600 gram fiberglass design. Just because your sled is designed for one discipline of riding doesn't mean that you have to be pigeonholed. With a few key accessories, you can take a sled like your Backcountry XRS and transform it into a high mile rider or take along a family member for the trip without sacrificing all that XRS cool factor. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. The Indy Evo has been a huge step forwards in our industry and appeals to a younger generation of rider who really doesn't have all that many options. 
Now today we're gonna to be installing the Evolution Kit on our Evo, and it's from Polaris and takes this mid-size 550 all the way up to a full speed 550 Indy. The Evolution Kit is an impressive upgrade for your Indy Evo. And it's pretty cool because your junior sled head and the family can ride the Evo as it comes for many years of fun. But when they get big enough or skilled enough to need the benefits of better performance, better suspension, and a larger full speed sled, there's no need to trade in your Evo. Rather, just buy this all-encompassing kit, bolt it on, and voila, you've got yourself a full-size Indy 550, all for the very attractive price of $14.99 US or $19.34.99 Canadian. Now, the Evolution Kit isn't your afternoon project. It requires a lot of taking this sled apart. So if you're not handy, don't attempt this one at home. Take it to your dealership. And even if you are handy, it's gonna require some serious time and a bunch of specialty tools. We start up front and completely remove the stock front end. I'm talking everything. Shocks, springs, skis, both upper and lower A-arms, and the tie rods and spindles. So pretty much the only thing that we're saving here is the ski hoops. This, in my opinion, is the easiest part of the swap and really doesn't require all that much skill, time, or effort. Now, reassembly can be a little bit trickier. And well, I guess in truth, it's not necessarily the assembly part that's trickier. It's the fact that we're replacing the tie rods. So that means that we're gonna have to do a front end alignment. But the rest of the parts are just a basic swap back into place. Nothing too terribly hard here, taking the front end travel from 4.1 inches to a trail taming 7.1 inches, as well as widening the front end of the sled from the stock Evo 44 inch to 48 inches outside width. In other words, we have updated the front end of this sled to a full 550 Indy spec, including the RideFX MPV shocks and springs. Now, while we're on the topic of suspension, the next big update is the rear skid, and this is gonna require you to get your hands just a little bit dirtier, because now we gotta pull the entire rear skid right out of the tunnel. Once the rear skid is out, we can go ahead and take it nearly completely apart and replace the shocks, springs, both coil and torsion, as well as the limiter strap to allow the rear skid to move further. The stock rear suspension travel on the Evo is a respectable 9.1 inches, but when you do the evolution update, you increase that by over 50% more. One of the coolest parts about the Evo is that Polaris built it with the Evolution kit in mind. And by that, I mean that yes, you do have to change shocks, springs, and limiter straps, but you don't have to touch the rails or the torque arms. That's pretty smart. The torque arms are long enough from the factory to allow for the increase in travel of 13.9 inches that this kit provides. Part of allowing this increase is a new limiter strap that now allows the arms to travel much further. While there are a few pieces to be swapped out back, the hardest part of the change is just getting the skid lined up and back into the tunnel. Once you're installed, you'll notice a significant increase in ride height that now matches the front end. Those 4.8 inches of extra travel also increase the overall height of the Evo from 41 inches to now 48 inches, giving it the same full-size look as a 550 Indy. Now under the hood, there's a few key changes that need to be made to realize the full potential of this 550 motor and get all the power that you would from a 550 Indy. Switching out the throttle flipper is one of the keys to getting all that power out of the 550 fan cool motor. But the CDI box is another big part that allows the Evolution kit to get all of the power, altering rev limits, timing, and all things related to spark. Seeing as this isn't an EFI motor, it can't just use a simple ECU flash. It needs a complete CDI replacement. Good thing it's not hard to get at it, and it's plug and play for install. And with that, the Evo went from being limited to 5 8 throttle to now wide open throttle. The Evolution kit comes with a full set of gears. Along with the throttle that we just changed out, the CDI box, as well as clutching, you're gonna get all that available horsepower, which means all that power to the ground and the top speed, just like the 550 Indy. Now, if you haven't done gearing before, it can seem like a daunting task, but really it's not all that hard. Just make sure you do it with a cold pipe and a good oil catcher. And it's nice on the Evo because we don't have to take off the pipe at all, but we will need to get rid of the battery, battery tray, and the disc brake setup, running off a spline stub sticking through the chain case cover. With this stuff out of the way, drain out the oil, then remove the cover. Once inside, it's mainly just remembering where everything went, so take pictures before you remove everything, and then simply back off the tensioner, unbolt the lower gear, and it all comes sliding off. Swap out your stock gears and simply retrace your steps to get it back together. And finally, never, ever, ever, ever forget to put fresh oil back in the chain case. I know that seems obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people are gonna forget this step. Now the final step is gonna be done one of two ways, and this all depends on the tools that you have available to you. And for this kit, I'm talking about clutching. The Evolution kit needs to have some parts removed from the stock clutches in the way of shims, and then also two new springs installed in both the primary and secondary. 
Because of the need for a few specialty Polaris tools, we recommend you get your dealer to do this portion of the update. They have the tools and you won't need them again, so there's no reason to buy them. And with that, there's simply nothing else to do, except for the obvious. Which of course is to go ride. Now besides the fact that you have a slightly smaller seat as well as a slightly smaller gas tank, everything else on this sled is full power, full suspension, full performance. And when you compare this to an Indy 121, including the price of the Evolution kit, you're actually a thousand bucks better off. I always find manufacturers new model announcements intriguing. So often they build up a ton of hype and excitement over a model that's really just a variant of an already existing sled. This season, Arctic Cat had not just one, but two new models that they had built up a lot of anticipation for, the Riot and the Riot X. Before we get the lowdown on these new sleds, we have to wonder, is it just a cool new name for a sled we've already ridden? Right up front, I'm just gonna come out and say it. No, the Riot and Riot X really are new models for Arctic Cat, and in truth, new concepts. AJ spent a good amount of time on the Riot, which is the 50-50 crossover version, and has covered that sled in another test ride, which left the Riot X, the Riot's deep snow counterpart, all for me. And I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty excited about it. So what is a Riot X? Well, in terms of specifications, it's an 800cc, 146 inch deep snow sled with a 38 inch wide mountain front end and an all new skid frame wrapped in a 2.25 lug track. But it really is so much more than just specifications. So let's start by taking a look at what it's made of specifically, then we'll talk about what it's for and just how good it is. Under the hood of the Riot X is Arctic Cat's much revered 800 SeaTech 2 mil. Now anyone who says Arctic Cat can't compete with anything less than an 850 clearly hasn't spent any time aboard a SeaTech 2 800 equipped snow scooter. This engine is impressive. I personally love how snappy it is. It loves to rev and it pulls super hard up top. It's a great engine for a 146 inch deep snow sled with a lower lug like the Riot it's gonna rely heavily on track speed to keep it moving in the deep stuff. Speaking of 146, both the Riot and Riot X models get a new skid frame that's an on-off trail hybrid combination of proven technologies from both disciplines. It's a good working skid frame that provides a more than adequate on-trail ride in the Riot, but is still very capable in the deep snow in the Riot X. Up front, the Riot X gets Arctic's proven mountain front end with an awesome set of Fox QS3 shocks, but no other real changes from the rest of their mountain lineup. And this is one part that really sets the Riot and Riot X apart. The Riot X is not trying to be a crossover sled, so a mountain front end is not a drawback at all. This ergonomic package, especially with its telescopic handlebar pull, is excellent for playing in the deep snow or getting a little air time whenever the opportunity presents itself. It's comfortable and standing, and it doesn't inhibit your ability to move around on the sled. If I had to pick words to describe the Riot X, they would be rowdy and playful. This sled was never intended to be an ultra-refined, tight tree riding sled. Its short length and lower lug height, along with its excellent shock package, definitely make it much more of a hooligan sled than anything else. From the moment I laid eyes on this sweet looking green, black, and blue Riot X, I knew all I wanted to do was slay some pow and hit some sweet jumps. So that's exactly what I did. Thanks to its shorter length versus a more dedicated mountain sled, the Riot X loves to get its tips up when climbing. And it's so easy to maneuver through the trees or on the side of a slope. It wants to pivot on its track and changes directions with an almost anxious feel. So is there anything I don't like about the Riot X? Mm, not much, but if I did have to pick one thing, it would be the lug height. I've already stated a number of times that this sled is not intended to be a full bore mountain sled, but the truth of the matter is anyone who buys the Riot X versus the Riot is doing so because they want more deep snow capability. I think a 2.5 or even a 2.6 paddle would have made this sled infinitely more capable and been an even better complement to its shorter 146 inch length. 
The only other real gripe I have with the Riot X is not sled specific, but it's simply that if you didn't spring order one, you can't get one because in 2020, Arctic Cat isn't selling any sleds in season. I respect and understand their reasoning behind this move, and I think in the long run, it's gonna make them a healthier company, but it means that by the time you watch this review, it'll be too late. Do I like the Riot X? You're darn straight I do. Is it fun to ride? Fun would be an understatement. Did Articat do a great job with this one? Absolutely. Should you buy one? Well, if you're the type of rider who loves riding off trail but doesn't have access to or doesn't necessarily want to ride ultra steep terrain, yet still wants a sled that can attack the deep stuff, lift its skis, and launch some sweet air, there's no question. The Riot X is a sled you should be taking a very serious look at. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles, MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Hercules Tire, Ride on Our Strength. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.